Hey everyone, I've got a guest. <laughs> Hi, I don't belong here. <laughs> uh, even though we don't normally have wit on the regular videos here on DJP, usually just on stream team, I thought this would be a good one to have her here so she can ask questions uh, about the topic today, which is fiber optics. Because, well... I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> she'll, I know, she'll know fiber what to ask. is better and uh, good for your diet. <laughs> <laughs> She'll know better what to ask than I will, so so that'd be good to have her here. Yeah. So thanks for to coming. Clarify. <laughs> You're welcome. I was already here. <laughs> so fiber of all the all the links that I have. Um, so in, in, in descriptions for my videos, I have shortcut links to to product information and and to buy. What's the most popular? <laughs> fiber. Fiber by far. Eight out of the top ten links on the site all have to do with fiber optic products. Which is crazy. It's like, that is it's not, crazy. I would have never guessed that. Yeah, it's not something that I talk about that much on the channel. But yeah, seriously, it's and it isn't, it isn't even close. It's like the gap from the fiber to the non-fiber. It's like two to one. It, the number of clicks gets cut in half. So, Dang. so there's a lot of popularity among fiber um, here on the channel. So I thought it'd be good to do a crash course, talk about all of it, instead of making people go watch five other videos mm -hmm. to kind of cover it all in one. You so, just send into this one. Exactly. <laughs> Go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, before we actually get into the fiber itself, so let's talk about a couple other types of uh, inter interconnects. Mm -hmm. So, first one, HDMI. HDMI. <laughs> My nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> I also do not like it anymore. Yeah. Um, yes, you can carry video signals, but a very, only a very short distance, and it seems to have a mind of its own in, in terms of whether your camera and your switcher are talking in the mm -hmm. same language. So... And they can easily come off too. Oh yeah, like yeah. Not There's nothing secure. to nothing to lock it in place. Yeah. yeah. So someone I'll yanks on a cable, and you're done for. You know. So mm -hmm. HDMI is not our friend no. in video production. So next one up. So next uh, type of connection that we use frequently is SDI. So it's a BNC style connection mm -hmm. with a coax uh, cable. Mm -hmm. Very reliable up to a certain distance. So if you're shooting 1080p, you can probably reali realistically get 300 feet, 100 meters roughly, out of an SDI cable. If you need to go any farther than that, this is not gonna cut it. It's just, right. it's not, not reliable enough. Mm -hmm. So. But it does lock in. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, it locks in. It's, it's a nice HDMI. secure connection. Yeah. Yeah, so SDI is is awesome if you're not running long distances. It's, it's my, my preferred for for running shorter distances. Right. If you need to go longer, you need to go farther, like I need to do here in my trailer. Now my trailer is never parked within 300 feet of where we're shooting. Uh, that's where fiber comes in. Mm -hmm. And so that my entire trailer is based on fiber. Like the trailer wouldn't work if fiber wasn't an option. Fiber connection here. So it's this- It's small. Yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> it's unbelievably tiny actually. <laughs> So the actual fiber, I mean, so you, there's a white tip on there, but that's actually mm -hmm. a, a protective sleeve around the, the fiber itself. The fiber in there, oh, okay. this is what we call single mode fiber, and with that, it's so narrow that light can't disperse as it goes through the, through the cable. It's going through a really, really narrow channel. Mm. It's nine nanometers, which basically means if you were to take 110 of those fibers, lay them side by side, and it would be, it would be one millimeter wide. Insanely, wow. insanely small. And then these, do these clip in? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I remember yeah. using them. Yeah, so, yeah. So I don't but, think I actually knew what I was using. <laughs> Probably not. Like the name it, of yeah, it. Who would, yeah, unless somebody told you, how would anybody know that this is actually a fiber connection, right? Right. Uh, but this is what we call LC. The connector is, is LC. Uh, the fiber is what we call single mode. And you can tell single mode LC, the right connection for video by the blue connector. So oh, okay. if you see the blue connector, then you know you got the right thing. So I've got some other cables here that have that green on them. Mm. It can be, it's, you can send a signal over this, but you can't plug this directly into, into the video equipment itself. So yeah, okay. the blue connection. And you also know that there's two connections here instead of just one. And that's mm -hmm. because this is actually a bi-directional signal. So you've got one for the cam signal coming from camera, mm -hmm. whatever you're shooting. And you've got another one for signal going back to camera. And that's so like when you're shooting, when we're shooting, you can see what's going on. Well, I've got the program feed. It's also how I do intercom. With, oh, with, okay. With the, yeah, because fiber can only send a signal in one direction at a time. I mean, SDI is the oh, same. Okay. But 
Yeah, but, but fiber both. fiber always pretty much always comes in pairs. Mm -hmm. So you got one for, one for send, one for receive. But it's actually that actually is glass in there. It's but it's so thin that it's flexible, and that's why you're cool. able to make a cable out of it. Yeah, yeah. The manufacturing process. If you want to see something crazy, go watch a YouTube video about how they make fiber. It's it's kind of astonishing how complicated. Is that why it's so expensive? That's, 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 well, that's another common myth. People think that fiber is ridiculously expensive. In actuality, this cable, it's a 20 meter cable, it was only $20. You can't even buy coax SDI oh. cables for that. So, Why did I think it was so much more? That's, that's, that's what everybody thinks. And because it has been in the past. Fiber oh, has okay. always been super expensive. But it, that just isn't the case any longer. Hmm. So in terms of the cable, this is cheaper than this. And you get the ridic ridiculous distances out of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, with this black magic equipment that I use for fiber, mm -hmm. it's rated for, I think it's 10 kilometers. So you run a cable for 10 kilometers out of this. Oh, okay. So, I mean, farther than I'm ever going to run a video signal, you know. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so a single mode. Uh, there are two different types of jackets and housings that these are in. This is what we call an armored one. So it's protected from damage, like someone steps on it, rolls over it with a cart, drives over it with a car. <laughs> Can you cut it? No. Okay. No, you can't. Uh, but armored cable is protected from damage, so. Can you chop it with a machete? It won't recover. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that's that's one of the downsides of fiber. Like in, in order to get the equipment to put the ends on, to terminate the ends, it's really expensive. You're talking thousands of dollars for the machine to put a new new end on a fiber cable. So for oh, fiber, so it's better just to buy a new one. Yeah, exactly. So I, I consider these to be disposable. So if anything okay. ever happens to one of these things, I just throw it out because I'm 20 bucks. It's you know, it's mm -hmm. it's not worth. It's not even worth my time. Yeah. Trying to take it somewhere to get it fixed, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, but that said, I've only had to throw away three or four of them in the five years that I've been using these things. Hmm. So. So they're durable. Reasonably durable. I mean, you have to t you have to be ca cautious. You know, don't put it in a place where heavy tra heavy foot traffic is going to be walking by. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to trip over it. You also have to be careful about the bend radius. So you don't want to bend it too tight. It, oh. it can damage or, at very minimum, block the signal because mm -hmm. it is just light. Yeah, it, it, these it, are really light. I like them because they're easier than a lot of the other cables. Yeah. But the signal itself is actually a light signal. It's infrared light that's going through the going through the cable. So hmm. these connectors that are that are on these devices. So this one on the left, it's outputting an infrared light that's flashing over three billion times a second. <laughs> and that's 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 the signal that's going through this cable. And the other end's got a little detector. So the the one on the right is actually a detector. It's looking for the light coming through the cable on the other side. So uh. yeah. And if you get into 4K, that it gets even faster, you know, uh, 4K at 60 frames per second. Uh, it's 12 billion times per second that it's that it's flashing on and off in order to send that How signal. How do they even knew that, know that? Uh, I'm not sure exactly when it was figured out, but <laughs> but somebody or it's probably centuries ago figured out figured out that light, when you shine it in, guess, yeah. in water or glass, that it reflects internally, and will follow the path. Mm. So that goes into here, right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah, okay. so um, in this case, uh, it's two separate ones on the same cable, but uh, very often it'll come as one. So if I grab one of my other cables here, you see that there's actually, they're actually attached together. It's still oh, two connectors, yeah. and there, but there's just a little clip there that's holding, holding the two of them together. Um, but the thing to, to watch out for when you're connecting equipment is whatever order you connect them on one end, you have to do the opposite side, opposite on the other side. So if I do Oh really? Cable one, I don't on the left having here. To like worry about that. Yeah, I've I've, I've taken care of it for you. Because you already know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if we do one two on this side, on the other end we'll have to do two one. Oh. Okay. So because like I say one, the f the first port always transmits, and you need it to be go, go into the receiver on the other side, which is on the second port, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you swap them on the two ends. Oh, okay. So, and for the technical, it's what they call B style uh, wiring, where you swap them the ends so yeah um so do you just troubleshoot it do you just guess which one it's supposed to be and if it doesn't work you just do it the opposite yeah yeah <laughs> uh pretty much okay when i've had issues with fiber nine times out of ten it's because it hasn't been snapped in all the way it just oh it, somebody didn't push it in until it clicked 
so yeah, let's actually take a closer look at a couple pieces of equipment here. So uh, this is the Blackmagic Design camera converter. Mm -hmm. uh, this converts fiber to SDI and HDMI. You can do either one. So it's meant to... So it converts the fiber into yeah. one of those formats? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Oh. Yeah. So when the that. signal flow, you have your output of your camera coming in either SDI or HDMI. You can use, it, use either one. It doesn't really matter. And then we it goes want out. SDI, though. We, want, we prefer SDI, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, so and then it goes out the fiber. On the other end, it comes to, this is their, what they call the studio converter. Okay. So that's what I have connected on the other end. And we'll, we'll, we'll go more, more detail on that in a minute. And then, then it goes into my video switching system. And then the output of the video switching system comes back into the studio converter, back out through fiber, and then back into the input on here. Mm -hmm which then goes to the, the, both the SDI and HDMI outputs, so you can look at them on your camera, on the monitor it's sitting on your camera. Okay. But that but also carries intercom, too. Yeah, I was going to say, I, isn't that what we use it yeah, for, is, it is the intercom? Yeah, okay. yeah so uh, it also does tally, so oh, okay. yeah, it's got the red lights here on the ends that light up when, when the camera is active, when that particular camera is active, and that's part of this hmm. as well. Technically, all this signal is it's SDI and just using light instead of electricity. But it's the same, you know, if the signal is on versus off on, on, on the, the coax, mm -hmm. it's the same thing with, with, the, with, the, with this. The light's either on or off. So it's, mm. it's just a different way to carry the signal, but it's, it's still SDI. It's, it's still an still SDI okay. signal. Okay. Yeah. And the cool thing about Blackmagic, the way, what they've done here, the, the intercom, okay, so SDI can carry not just can carry, it always carries 16 channels of audio. There's always 16 channels of S in SDI, no matter what. Even if you're only using two, there's, oh. there are still 16 channels there. Most of them are just quiet. There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. What Blackmagic does is they use channels 15 and 16 for intercom. Oh, so it's kind of okay. clever. They're reusing cool. a, part, a signal that's already there. It's already there, yeah. Yeah. And so, but as a, as a result, you get really high quality sound, you know, better than other intercoms. You, you probably noticed that I, my intercom system sounds better than most of the other ones that are out there. Yeah. It's clearer and mm -hmm. just, yeah. So, uh, but that's because it's sending the intercom signals over an SDI signal that's going over the fiber cable, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's essentially what this thing does. It's um, converting the SDI or HDI from your camera mm -hmm. to... LSDI with the audio for the intercom mm -hmm. and sending it out and then receiving a signal back from the studio converter and then separating out those channels for intercom and then part of the SDI signal also has the, the, the tally information too. She basically oh, okay. says camera four is live and so mm -hmm. you program these boxes and tell it which camera it goes to so that's why I have labels on them number one. Oh, so this okay, one's programmed yeah. to be for camera number one mm -hmm. and so it knows when camera one is live the tally light turns on, and then it puts a red frame around your video in your monitor. So, right. so that means you're recording. <laughs> yeah, that means you're live. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the camera converter. Um, okay. My only complaint with this is they don't have a 4K version of it. <laughs> of it not. This is HD only, so it does 1080p at up to oh. 60 frames per, per second, which is rather confusing because the device that goes on the other end, the studio converter does do 4k okay yeah do they have a 4k version no no <laughs> no they do not so if no. you needed a 4k you'd have to get something else yeah okay. which i'm gonna have to do a whole separate video on how i do how i do 4k because this doesn't use because doesn't that doesn't work. yeah yeah okay all right so this is the studio converter um again it's for converting fiber to sdi coax sdi and versa 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 Mm -hmm. and also providing intercom. So this device itself actually can mix the audio from all the camera operators and then send it back out so they can talk to each everybody can talk to each other. Hmm. I use in my setup I use it a little bit differently. I send the audio out of this to a separate audio mixer to do an intercom. But I have another video about that. So if, <laughs> if that's something you're interested in go watch that video. We can link to it in the description here. Yeah. So we'll take a look at the back here. So they have, they also have another similar product it's called the Talkback converter. Mm -hmm. which is basically very similar except instead of four channels it does eight so this will do up to four cameras mm -hmm. you got your fiber connections uh, four of them there and then the video coming from cameras 
gets output on the SDI connection, so there's four of those. And then the video that you want to go back to camera is usually your program. So the so program comes in here, and then it has a loop output so you can run it to, to another piece of gear. So this is designed where you can stack multiple of them. Okay. So yeah, so if you want, if you had two of these, you could have to take the output of this one and then run it to the input of the next, and just keep doing that. Mm. So you don't have to have four or five outputs from your switcher running into right. each one of these things. Uh, and okay. then additionally, these also have connections for microphone and headphone for the intercom. So if you want to do your own separate intercom and just use this as a converter to get the audio in and out, you can. That's the way I use it. And you get better results with that than you do just using it by itself. Okay. But uh, you also notice it's got audio outputs. So mm -hmm. this is audio from camera. So if you need to take the audio from camera and send it out to a separate mixer, you, you can do that. You do it. Okay. Yep. Yep. So. But in terms of video sent back to all the different cameras, it, you only get one signal and then it's split four different ways. So you can't send one signal to one camera, a different signal to another camera, and so forth. It's like whatever you put in program input goes to all four, which is nor oh, it's normally not a problem, normal. right? Okay. It's like, it's like I mean, if, someone, if a camera operator wants to watch, look at the program feed, they want to look at the program feed, right? They don't mm -hmm. want to they don't want to go see what camera four across the room is doing. So. No. So, but sometimes I do, but not usually. Well, <laughs> right. with and with DJP, we actually do things a little bit differently. We do the yeah. quad view for the mm -hmm. camera operator, so that the first three camera operators can see what are what each else, whatever, what the others are doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so which, if we like do a, the same similar shot, then we'll know to change. Yeah, exactly. It yeah, yeah. So early. you can see like, oh, we got two wide shots. I'll go tight mm -hmm. or something, right? Yep. Which it's really helpful. I look at it all the time. Yeah. Like and that, and just like see what everyone else is doing so I can pick a different shot. And for me as a director, it really helps. Like I don't have to necessarily think to remind everybody, hey, everybody's on wide. Can somebody yeah. give me a tight or something, you know? So, mm -hmm. all right. In terms of the front panel, uh, so this, these buttons here allow you as the director to be able to talk to the different camera operators. So you can either press a button to talk to one person at a time or you can lock all of them on and, and talk to everybody at the same time, which is the way you'd normally do it, right? As mm -hmm. director, you're not, you're not going to press the button for camera two. Right. Uh, you know, you're going to want to talk to everybody all at once. But you do have the option of just say, hey, Joe, you know, get back on task, <laughs> you know, or something, you know. Stop dilly dallying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, it also has a speaker, so you can hear the intercom through this and the volume control to go with that. And then places to plug in a headset for for intercom. So you can use just this product and do a halfway decent intercom. Although I find that the, these audio inputs are pretty low quality. They're very quiet and very noisy okay. and just not. So you get way better results hooking up an external system through the through the things on the back. Mm -hmm. So so exciting. There's uh, another product very similar to this called the talk, talkback converter, which instead of having four inputs has eight. But you do give up the audio outputs. There's no room for them. So oh, if you do okay. the talkback converter, you get a fiber, an SDI. And then there's a couple other SDIs, which you can use in place of the fiber. Again, another video, <laughs> but no audio outputs. So, mm -hmm. so but that's that. And, and, and like I say, this does do 4K at up to 30 frames per second. So. Oh, it does 4K. Oh, yeah. but this doesn't. But that doesn't, yeah. <laughs> so uh, when I need to run 4K, I'll use one of these guys um, at the camera. So this is the optical fiber 12G from, from Blackmagic. Mm -hmm. Fiber connection on one end and then SDI input and output on the other. That's very, very, very simple. People think people get confused about this one is it ships bare without what's called the SFP module. So you have to buy this part separately from this. So when you go to buy this, this is all you get. That part's not, is, is left empty. And then you buy the appropriate, it's what they call SFP, so all, small, Form factor pluggable is what it stands for. Terrible name. As you buy yeah. an appropriate one for what you need. So this one, this is a, this is their six gig version. So this one does 4K at up to 30 frames per second. They have a three gig version that does 1080p. They also mm -hmm. have a 12, 12 gig version that will do 1080 do 4K at 60 frames per second. So, so they make you choose which one you want. Yeah, yeah, and you can save money that way. If you're only shooting HD, you don't have to buy the expensive 12 12 gig one. Right. So you can just get away with getting this the, the three gig version of it. So. Yeah, you buy it, you slide it in there until it clicks, and then you're good to go. Mm. And that's that's actually the case with all of these things. So on the, the camera converter, if you want to pull the SFP out, you can. 
if it goes bad, you can just replace that one thing. I have oh, okay. I have had to do that before. I have had one die on me before. Hmm. But so you just buy a new SFP, pop it in there, you're good to go. So, and since that only supports HD, that's only a three gig. And then this one, because it does support 4K, these are six gig. And that's that's the way they ship from the factory. Oh, so, okay. so it does include the 4K from the factory. Hmm. So any questions so far? We're just getting started. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can think of. Okay. Um, so that's a few of the devices. Um, let's get those out of the way and talk a little bit more about some cabling. So, so as mentioned previously, this is an armored cable. So, all right. So in, in the end there, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny microscopic glass fiber, and then it's got mm -hmm. cladding and other, other forms of protection on the outside. So, um, yeah, the actual fiber itself is just, it's microscopic, you know, it would be okay. way smaller than human hair. It's just tiny, oh, tiny. Oh, really? Yeah. And then surrounding all of that with an armored cable like this, it actually does have, it has a layer of Kevlar and then it has a layer of metal around the outside to try and offer some protection. Hmm. But when you go to buy a fiber cable, it probably by default isn't going to be armored. Armored are kind of, you have to kind of go and find them. That's not what you're going to find. If you go on Amazon and search for fiber, you're not, you're not going to be getting fiber, uh, getting, just getting bare. armored. No, it's what they what they do. Oh. Is, yeah, and this is this is actually more typical of what you would see if you were to go buy a cable somewhere. So uh, you see the yellow jacket. That's that's very common for a single mode fiber that we use. Again, blue connector. That's what you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is not armored, so there's, this has a lot less protection for that glass fiber that's on the inside. As such, this is more delicate. So I wouldn't use these in a video production environment just because cables are getting tripped on. And what is it used for then? It, it was invented Computers. mostly for computer networking, yeah, and we'll, we'll cover some of that in a little bit. But, mm. but yeah, so the, this yellow standard unarmored cable is really mostly for computer networking. It'll work for the video stuff, but you have to be more careful with this. The stuff is ridiculously small. I mean, this is 50 meters right here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 100, 150 feet, you know? Um, very small, very lightweight. Uh, that said, uh, you can't always go by the color of the cable to determine what type it is. Like, you, you, you look at this and you wouldn't necessarily know that this is the right type of cable, mm -hmm. aside from the blue ends. Right. But the blue cable, it's just blue because it can be, you know, it doesn't have to be. But this this is actually an armored cable too, and in terms of capability, mm -hmm. very similar to the black one we talked about earlier. Got it. Blue <laughs> doesn't always mean Yeah, blue. you can't always go by color, but <laughs> if you see yellow, it probably is single mode. Mm -hmm. And the blue connector, blue LC connector is what we're looking for with the black magic setup. There are other types of connectors as well. I should have gotten one out, but, uh, but yeah, LC is, this LC style connector is the most common mm -hmm. uh, these days. So okay. uh, there are some other ones there. ST, SC, FC, um, yeah, MTP, a bunch of them. So that said, actually, you let me. this isn't a test because <laughs> I would not remember any of those. Yeah, it's going to be one of those videos where people are going to want to rewind. And, mm -hmm. so, so I get why you get a lot of questions now because it's a lot. Yeah, of little details. I, th I think the biggest people don't uh, thing people don't understand about this fiber is these are just SDI signals. They're they're you're, but they're being transmitted using light instead of electricity. That's that's the only real difference. Which but, is cool. Yeah, it's cool. It makes and it makes it uh, makes it affordable. You know, I mean, right. okay. I mean, if it was something special, these things would be a lot more expensive than what they are. Hmm. So, uh, but one of the cool things about fiber optics, though, is because the fibers are so small, you can cram a lot of them into a small space, and mm -hmm. so. This connector right here is what we call an MTP, and I forget what that stands for, but uh, but that cable, the, fi the MTP cable, mm -hmm. actually has 12 fibers in it. So there are 12 separate strands in inside there, and you can see on the other end, this is a breakout cable. So mm -hmm. these 12 signals are being combined into one connector on the other oh, end. Okay. So if you want to run a bunch of bunch of data, a bunch of cameras over a long distance, mm -hmm. you can get a trunk cable like this yeah so I mean there's no electrical components in there it's just light goes in here comes out here very simple in concept nothing fancy about it that's cool though um, so and there's a couple ways to do it you can do it with a breakout cable like this or you can use this this is what they call a fiber cassette 
-hmm. And so you plug your, your uh, MTP into there. And then one of these corresponds to one of these on the other end. So, you know, you want to, again, you want to run a lot of cable, a lot of signals over a single cable. You, yeah. you can absolutely do that. Mm. So, uh, you don't find these used in video very much. But they absolutely do work. You know, the same cables. Yeah, I've never seen it. The same cables that work for computer networking also work for for, for video as well. Mm -hmm. uh, before I forget, I should mention these SFPs mm -hmm. that we use for fiber. These are special for video. So oh, I, have, I have this one for for computer network over here. These are not. They, they look the same, and they will plug into the, the different the different equipment, mm -hmm. but they're not compatible with one another. Okay. So, so I mean, this physically fits in there, but it doesn't work for, okay. for sending video. And if it, if it did work, you couldn't rely on it. Uh, the way the signals are sent over the fiber is different. And so it, it, even if it did work, it's just not something I would ever, ever recommend. Mm. So, not to mention the fact that these are meant for carrying a lot more data than these oh, are. So, yeah. computer network, one gigabyte per second. 3, 6, or 12 gigabytes per second, mm -hmm. or gigabits per second, I should say, uh, on these guys. So these are meant to handle. Is that why you're saying 12G instead of 12K? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. In the other video, I was like, what's 12, I was like, legitimately, like, what's 12G? And you're yeah. like, oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah. So, but another cool thing about fiber, um, because it's just light, when you need to, you can split it. And so I've got this this splitter right here. So on this one, you got one input, and then internally inside there, it splits it to four separate outputs. So if I need to uh, send video from my switcher to four cameras, I can actually do it with a single cable for the main run, and then split it at the very end. Oh, okay. So I've got the input here, so this will be video coming from switcher, and then these four here would, could go to the cameras. Um, but yeah, no electronics required. It's just, there's just a thing in there taking the light and splitting it into mul and down multiple paths. That doesn't seem real. <laughs> <laughs> and you, have to, you do have to be careful because every time you split it, the, the, it gets a little bit dimmer. And if, if you split it too many times, then it becomes unreliable. So oh. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as a standard practice, but in a pinch, it works. I did use these exclusively for a long time hmm. with my production system in order to, to save fiber strands going from the tray or out into the venue. Mm -hmm. So I would just send one for, for the camera and split it inside. So again, not necessarily recommended, but it can work. As mentioned, there are computer network fiber solutions as well. Mm -hmm. Fiber's all the same, but the boxes are different. Ethernet in to fiber out. And this is what we call a media converter. The name for these devices is called a media converter. Mm -hmm. So that allows you to send ethernet connections over a long distance. Like ethernet also, maxes out at about 100 meters. But you convert it to fiber, run for miles. Miles oh, and miles. Okay. Yeah, so very handy. Uh, there's also, I should mention here, that the keen-eyed among the, our viewers, I think I should make a ton of noise for that. Uh, keen key eye among our viewers, notice this only has one connection instead of two. Mm -hmm. That's what we call a bi-directional device. And what this is doing is sending it's still sending signals in both directions, but it's doing it over a single cable, and it's do it does that by using two different colors of light. Oh, okay. So it's it's all infrared light, but there's different wavelengths, different individual frequencies, and so the way this works is it receives on one frequency and transmits on another. That way, you're able to get signals going in both direction oh. over a single fiber. So you know, basically saying, I'm going to transmit on red, you transmit on blue, mm -hmm. and then I'll watch for the blue light, you watch for the red light and then we'll know how to communicate with one another. That's essentially what these are doing. Okay. So you're able to save fiber strands that way. And mm -hmm. I, I use that for my computer networks here with my, within my trailer. So that way I'm able to get twice as many signals out of the same number of fibers. Okay. I haven't found any that work for video yet. So, so far I've only been able to Oh, do it's it. just for that? Yeah, okay. just for the computer networking, so. Oh. Um, video would be helpful. Yeah, it certainly would. Yeah, particularly when you're dealing with a big trunk of cable. So I'm gonna. <laughs> he was saying that this thing's not heavy, and if you could hear him crawling to move it. But I have my big 24-strand uh, fiber cable that I bought a few months back. So uh, I have a whole video about that. But since we're talking about fiber, it would make sense to bring that up now. <laughs> Looks well, huge compared to the other fiber fiber cables, yeah. right? But compared to this. copper. 
Yeah, it's actually the equivalent copper. It's actually really small. So mm. there are not just this is an MTP style connector, but instead of having 12 fibers in there, there's 24. So this one cable mm -hmm. carries 24 signals okay. at once. And that's usually this is what you use to go into mm -hmm. the venue. Yeah, yeah. For so everyone to so plug one into. end just plugs into the back of the trailer. The other end goes inside the venue into a breakout box that I have, which then okay. splits out those individual signals. And in terms of what that box is doing, it's not doing anything very sophisticated. It's basically the same as this. Mm. So it has an MTP connector with 24 instead of 12, and then it has 24 connections on the other end. And that's what goes to the cameras. Okay. So there's no electronics involved in any of that. It's all just, you know, these simple fiber optic cables, uh, which makes it pretty reliable. You know, I don't have to have power for that and just plug it in and go. Um, but this has been absolutely awesome. It saves so much time. Yeah. Literally to connect the trailer, plug this in, twist it to lock, and good to go. Mm -hmm. So it saves a lot of time. You guys want to see how ridiculous this thing is, though? <laughs> okay, wait, I might not be able to. <laughs> <laughs> how many feet is this? This one is 150 meters. So roughly 450 feet, a little more. Close to 500 feet. So this is actually shorter than my old one. I had a 200. See, you can see how big it is now that we sit next to it. <laughs> this thing's giant, and it's really heavy. No, but it's so much lighter and so much smaller than... If we had to do the same thing with try and do the same thing with copper, mm -hmm. just way 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 cheaper, way cheaper, way f everything, way better, you know, in yeah. every way. Um, Should we do a thumbnail with this one? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 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 yeah, so this has made setup and takedown way 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 easier. It's like yeah, because this is what I was trying to think of what you do with those cables. I was like, I don't remember seeing them running to. The trailer. They don't, yeah. I remember this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this plugs in the back of the trailer, runs inside, plugs into the breakout box, and then the cameras get plugged into the breakout box. Right. So, yeah, mm -hmm. very easy. It's very quick. You know, yeah, uh, and the roller, everything makes it nice and yep. compact. Uh, as soon as, you know, as, as long as I have camera operators who know how to plug in the camera converters and whatnot, then we can actually be up and going within less than a half hour because mm -hmm. of this. Imagine how long it would take if we were having to run individual cables from the inside the venue out to the trailer. No. So, yeah. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> this one makes it so, so much easier. Yeah. So, yeah, this has been an absolute lifesaver. Uh, Is this pretty expensive? Um, kind of. Kind of. Um, I mean... Um, it's worth it if I, you're going to be doing it when a I'd lot, say though. When I say the price, you're going to say, that's a lot of money, but then if I tell you what the alternatives are, you're like, oh, that's not so bad. So, okay. this cable... Uh, well, I had to get out of China, so after all the import fees and everything, it was just under $2,000. Okay. But <laughs> if I had to use uh, Simpty Fiber, which we should talk about, um, it would be many, 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 many times that. What kind of fiber? Simpty. Simpty. S-M-P-T-E. Society okay. for Motion Picture and Television Engineers. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's an organization that sets all the electrical and all sorts of other standards associated with uh, live production and movies as well. So, oh. so, but Simpty Fiber, I don't have one. Um, Simpty Fiber, each because cable. Because it's so expensive? Yeah, each cable is this size for each camera or bigger. Actually, they're t they, tend, they tend to be bigger. So each camera has their own cable and they are really expensive. You're talking about $15 a foot for that cable. Why are they so much? Because they can be, oh, okay. <laughs> but but they're very thick. They're very rugged. In addition, uh, the one advantage they have over over my system is they actually carry camera a pair of power for the cameras as well. So mm -hmm. you don't have to plug the cameras in inside okay. the venue. They get the power from the truck. Oh, okay. So that's nice. Yeah, and they also a lot of the empty ones also have multiple return feeds. So not only do you have the video on the, for the monitor for the camera operator, you could also do a teleprompter that has its own video feed or mm. you know, a secondary like confidence monitor feed or something like that for, for, for talent to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Simpty Fiber can do that. But all they're doing for that is just they have a, a couple of additional fiber strands inside the cable in order to send that video from the truck inside of the venue. So oh, we okay. can accomplish the same thing with this. Just instead of one cable to cameras, we do two or three two or, or three, whatever. Yeah. So.
It's not as big of a, not that big of a deal. That's just slightly easier. Yeah. Yeah. And but but way you see, more expensive. And way heavier. And those cables are ridiculously oh. heavy. <laughs> oh really? Because because they're big. They're they're, oh, they're, yeah. they're very dense. You know. They're like I say they're they're bigger. They're quite a bit bigger than than the, than the fiber reel. They're like a giant XLR. Kind of. Yeah. Type thing. Yeah. The, the connections um, do kind of look like look like this. Uh, that, not, obviously not one of them, but but they mm -hmm. are they sort of do look a little bit like this. Oh, I should also mention when I mentioned Sempty Fiber that the signals being sent over those big, heavy, fancy cables, same signals that are being sent over these tiny ones. So, if somebody needed mm -hmm. to interface my truck, my trailer with uh, one of those big cameras, it's really just a simple converter. Oh, okay. So you don't have to you don't have to get any expensive any fancy expensive equipment in order to do it. So, hmm. yeah, there but they are. It's the same signal, just over a different fiber. So okay. Different type of fiber. So that should that covers most of it. Um, I, I also should briefly mention multi-mode fiber. So like everything that I talk about here is single mode. Multi-mode is kind of the one that came around first. Uh, it's, it was used to be far, far, far cheaper, mm -hmm. but the distances aren't really. You can't run it anywhere near the, the same long, um, the same amount of distance that you can in single mode. Okay. Multi-mode, a few hundred meters maybe. If you're lucky, whereas the single mode can go for miles. Uh, multi Is it because it's getting split? It's like the it's, strength yeah. of it. Or, uh, well, no. as it's traveling down the the fiber itself, the light can kind of bounce around a little mm -hmm. bit inside, and the more that happens, the more it kind of starts to interfere with itself. So you've got some paths that mm -hmm. uh, where it goes a little bit farther and than than others, and by the time you get to the other end, you can't distinguish what the original signal is from all the noise that's coming um. through. Okay. So multi-mode, it's still pretty common in computer networking, but it's never been used on the video side of things. Hmm. Uh, so I, I know of some people who have actually purchased multi-mode cables and used them with the single-mode equipment, and it can sometimes work, but you're playing with fire. You know, it's you're gambling that it's going to actually work, and yeah. so it's very not very much not recommended. Used to be single-mode was way more expensive than multi-mode. That's just not true anymore. Hmm. Uh, you know, when you can buy a 60 meter, a 20 meter Single mode armored cable for less than twenty dollars. It's just not worth with messing with the multi mode, and that even goes for computer networking as well. You know, when you go to buy a media converter, again you have to choose your own SFP. So if you're starting from scratch, get single mode SFPs, and then you know you've got you're gonna have a nice strong signal no matter how how far you have to run it. Cool. I hope that, well, that answers <laughs> why the co the cables are in certain places when mm -hmm. I'm there. Mm-hmm even though I'm not hooking them up. <laughs> but I was wondering how that works with the splitting it into that cable, the mm -hmm. big cable. Yep, yeah, so it's really just making a physical connection. The two cables touch one another on the end and the light goes through it and that's it. There's no, there's no electricity there. It's just all based on light. It just happens to be a color of light that we can't see and it's flashing so fast that even if you could see it, you couldn't tell that it was, that it was flashing. You would right. just look like, look, 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 look like it was glowing, so. Mm. Science. Yes. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that covers most of it. Um, and there's other topics related to fiber that I don't necessarily need to get into here. I mean, there's things like CWP, uh, C, C, w, C, <laughs> I can't remember the acronym. <laughs> I should probably look that up. <laughs> but it's basically um, sending a lot of different colors of light over the same fiber. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it right. I'm going to get it wrong if I try and do it. But, but you send it multiple different colors over the same fiber. So, okay. Yeah, so that way well, you can cram a whole lot more signals into one physical cable. Someone who knows is yelling at the computer yeah, screen yeah, right it's now. Like, it's, it's this, it's, you yeah, idiot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I normally do it. I just get not, think, not thinking very well on my feet. So, uh, But yeah, it allows you to send a lot of different uh, signals, a lot more signals over the same cable. Um, that's used by the telecommunications companies, like internet, telephone, whatever. Mm -hmm. They do that. All, all over the place. Cause in that case, fiber is expensive because you're running it for hundreds of miles. Right. And yeah. if you can get away with one cable, one set of 64, yeah, you do it. You know. Okay. So, but in terms of what we're doing, it really doesn't make that much sense because a couple hundred meters of cable is so cheap. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> now I bored you to tears. No. <laughs> yeah. I like. I mean, I kind of use it. So. Yeah. Does that make a little, a little more bit. sense though? Like what's, yeah. what's going on? So mm -hmm. and, you know, you're plugging that in. It's really just an SDI signal, yeah. but it's going over light instead of electricity. So okay. yeah, it kind of make it makes it a little easier to understand.
mm -hmm. I think, for people. So, But yeah, for some reason, people are just scared of fiber. Uh, I just thought it was really expensive. Yeah, everybody does. Everybody so, does. I don't really think about cables either. So <laughs> that's yeah. the extent of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there you go. I can't claim to be a fiber expert, but if you got a simple question, you know, feel free to ask, ask me in the comments. Um, we'll have some links to some of the products that we talked about here. So if uh, you don't mind purchasing through those links, that does help the channel out. Got to pay her to edit these videos somehow. So, <laughs> so any, any help you can do there is very much appreciated. And we've also got Patreon uh, help to cover the cost of creating these videos. Uh, so very much appreciated there. So um, what else am I missing? Crew access. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this thing. Uh, <laughs> a website that I created for managing video production businesses. So uh, I never intended to market it. I created it for my own company. And a couple of people, other people saw it and said, hey, that's pretty cool. I'd like to use that. And said, okay. <laughs> yep. so, I've used it. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. And in your case, not even for live production. It was no, for, it was just for yeah. regular film. So they have call sheets, scheduling, everything you need to contact your crew and cast. It mm -hmm. makes it really easy. And keeping track of your equipment mm -hmm. and yeah, a whole bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, uh, it's got a ton of features. One of which is uh, email mailing list. So if you right. want to be notified when videos come out on this channel, you can go, there's a link in the, in the description down below to sign up for email notifications. And that's all being done by the Crew Access yeah, website as well. <laughs> so, yep. yeah. There's uh, a free version mm -hmm. and then multiple payment plans. Yep. Uh, anywhere from, you know, it's just free. And then there's several different payment plans based on the size of your company and your budget and so forth. So you can choose what's going to be appropriate for you. Different capabilities, uh, more capabilities in the higher end versions, obviously. So, but anyway, so it's crewaccess.com, and we'll have a shortcut link in the description. And let's put it up on screen here too. So, <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, anyway, I hope that covers it for fiber. Uh, I'd rather not make another one of these videos. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, okay. Thanks for coming. Thanks for asking yeah, questions. Thanks for and, teaching me some things. Yeah. Hopefully I'll remember some of them. If not, I'll go back to this video <laughs> and look go. it up again. <laughs> you probably would all memorize by the time you finish editing anyway. So. That's true. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thanks guys for watching and have a great day.